Hey and welcome to today's adventure of Terroir Tuesday. Today we are going to be unmasking our 2016 uh, <laughs> Helix Columbia Valley Merlot. So we're going to have lots of fun with this wine today. And you know what? We're sitting here in our new tasting room. You guys are getting a glimpse of uh, our new tasting room that we've been working on since the beginning of the year. So we're looking uh, forward to having you all back here at Reininger Winery and you can relax and uh, get comfortable here in our new digs. So uh, it's really kind of a facelift kind of thing, you know? Uh, so, anyway, uh, first of all, uh, just kind of a recap of what Merlot is. It's one of the six noble Bordeaux red varietals. Um, the other five are Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec, and uh, the long lost Carmenere, uh, which we do varietal bottlings of all of these wines. Um, where does it come from? You know, it's actually. Um, uh, the parents of it um, come from Cabernet Franc, which surprises a lot of people, but also an interesting esoteric grape called Magdalene Noir Chorantes. So um, it's uh, grown mostly, um, well, in uh, Bordeaux, the right bank of Bordeaux, but you know, it has kind of an undeserved reputation. It really is a wonderful plush wine. Uh, and it's softer than Cabernet Sauvignon, but oftentimes can be confused for Cabernet Sauvignon. In fact, Merlot is one of the most sought after wines in the world and such great wines as uh, Petrus, and, uh, so, which commands us about the highest price of any other wine in the world. So don't think that Merlot is not a big wine because it is, especially when it's grown in wonderful places such as the right bank of Bordeaux and right here in Washington State and uh, here in the Columbia Valley. So uh, it's just a fantastic, uh, uh, wonderful, wonderful wine. Um, and uh, its name actually uh, refers to um, blackbirds actually. So. I don't, we're not sure if it's because that's because they like blackbirds like it or it's just uh, dark in color. So, uh, yeah. Uh, another uh, characteristic of uh, Merlot is um, it's an early ripener. It, uh, as far as the reds are concerned, it uh, uh, ripens earlier, but it has an earlier bud break. We just had bud break here about a month ago and uh, so things are, the vines are well on its way. And uh, tell you a little bit about the 16 vintage, the 2016 vintage. We started out um, with a kind of really early hot um, spring and, uh, and then it went into um, more, well, actually fairly warm uh, summer too. And so then it cooled off quite a bit in the fall. And uh, so, but uh, that the, we had intermittent blasts of heat during the fall, but because Merlot ripens uh, fairly early as far as the red wines go, um, it, you know, it delivers some really nice, intense, uh, uh, dark fruit characteristics for, for that particular vintage. So anyway, we have a lot of fun with it. So let's go on and let's taste a little bit of this. Uh, Blackbird, shall we? No. Oh yeah, man, look at that color. Yeah, it's just, I tell you, the aromatics in this are very, very intense. And what I really get out is this big blast of uh, macerated uh, cherry is the first thing that uh, hits, hits my nose and I get a little bit of a boysenberry going on there. And, um, Yeah, it's quickly evolving into some plum and black currant and a little bit of black cherry and uh, uh, hints of uh, a little bit of hint of chocolate and a uh, tiny, tiny bit of whiffs of uh, vanilla happening there with a little bit of uh, Asian 
sweet Asian uh, spice, you know, coming from the oak on that. But uh, oh man, yeah, yeah, this this is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful nose. And is the more that um, um, I'm enjoying this nose here, the more the dark fruit really, really comes out on it. What's really nice about this wine, too, is we always try to be very judicious with our oak. This has about 32% new oak on it. Uh, it's mostly American oak. There's a little bit of French on it, but uh, if I recall, it's about 96% uh, American oak. And remember I mentioned that little bit of chocolate in this. Well, one of the reasons why I like to use American oak with Merlot, uh, one, American oak has a little softer tannins, uh, that complement the tannins of the Merlot, a um, little softer tannins in French oak, but also um, the spice seems to have some wonderful brown spices that seem to really complement. There's a little bit of a thread of chocolate in this, and so it kind of complements that that chocolate. So um, that's kind of uh, one of our markers here at uh, Reininger and Helix Wines is that we really use the oak to try and complement the, uh, the nature of the grape itself, both the flavors and the structure of the, of the grape. So. Mmm. Yeah. It has a real silky mouthfeel to it. Um, it has some nice acidity to it. Remember I said that the um, the fall uh, started cooling off, so it helped preserve the acidity. So it has some real um, lively acidity to it. It really kind of heightens uh, uh, the fruit character of it. So I really get a lot of plum and cassis and black cherry happening here. And again, remember, talked about that chocolate one. It really kind of manifests itself more in a, uh, like cocoa in this guy. Um, get a little bit of a, of a coffee, just hint, kind of went to Italy last year, so it reminds me of some of that Italian roast that we had over there. Yeah. And, but you know, the finish on this um, really gets a real heightened cherry, cherry on it and with a little hint of of uh, wood toast. I, my experience in the past, if I were to let this uh, stay open, um, I find that the plushness really, really increases in it. Uh, dark flavors and the finish, everything seems to intensify as the wine opens up. And um, gosh, I am really thoroughly um, excited about this wine. So, uh, Merlot is an excellent, excellent choice. Uh, it's, yeah, I tell you, it, it deserves much more recognition than it's received in the last decade anyway. Um, it's not just a, a blending wine to soften Cabernet Sauvignon, like I say, especially when it's grown in areas such as the Columbia Valley and uh, the Right Foot Bank. Uh, it's thoroughly, it's, it's a wonderful big wine. This isn't gonna age, quite as long as our Cabernet Sauvignon, but I tell you, you know, speaking of which, funny, quick story, um, uh, gosh, was it last year, or a year and a half ago, anyway, we opened up some of our uh, 1998, or actually, I take that back, 1997, that was our very first vintage. We had our Cab and our Merlot, and the one, the wine, and we also opened it with some other Walla Walla, uh, Valley wines, and the wine that actually showed the most fruit and uh, had the youngest uh, complexion, if you will, to it, uh, was our 1997 uh, Reininger uh, Merlot. So Merlot can last a long time and uh, sell her beautifully, but uh, this one's very silky and plush, and you're going to love the dark, delicious uh, fruit flavors in it. So. Take care, everybody. Thank you for joining us here, and we look forward to seeing you at our next Terroir Tuesday. So, until then, hang on, buckle your seatbelts, because we're going to be opening up soon. Looking forward to seeing you. Take care.